16 inch and 18 inch wheels are two of the most common electric unicycle size and anyone who's looking to purchase one will likely have to pick between the two. recommendations usually talk about things like convenience, torque, or agilities, and similar things. But this week, we're going to take a much deeper dive into what it means to ride an electric unicycle. And why that two inch difference may be a lot larger than you think, and how your choice may have an impact on not just the way you think, but also how your brain works. It's time to free our minds. Are you ready for a deep dive of electric unicycle? Roll the intro. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and help spread the uni gospel. difficult to describe what it's like to ride an electric unicycle and the sense of bond between man and machine where thoughts translate to motion as easily and naturally as walking or running. I remember when I first watched the original Marvel Iron Man movie in theater and seeing for the first time how Tony Stark is able to freely fly through the sky in his Iron Man suit and thinking to myself, I know exactly how that feels because even though an electric unicycle is obviously nowhere near the capability of the Iron Man suit, I think the essence of that sense of freedom is not because of its speed or power, but rather the connection between the suit and the man. There are no steering or throttle for the suit. Instead, opening his palm lights a repulsor and angling his arm change his flight vector. The suit is an extension to Tony's body and translate his thoughts directly into flight. Anyone who flown in a commercial jet had technically achieved the same objective of flying through the sky, but obviously it feels nothing like what Tony is experiencing. You're not free, you're stuck in economy, squished between other sweaty passenger on a 15-hour transatlantic. Even the pilot is simply going through a set of standard operating procedures to ensure that the flying machine carrying everyone to its destination do so safely and on time. Because freedom has less to do with speed or acceleration and more to do with your ability to translate thought directly into movement. And with its body motion based control, you lean forward to accelerate and back to brake. An electric unicycle I think is the closest thing you can get for something that would otherwise only exist in a comic book. But what does all of that have anything to do with wheel size? First, the reason why 16 and 18 inch wheel are the most common electric unicycle size is that they represent a balance of what is currently possible from a motor output perspective and stability. The larger the wheel is, the more momentum and stable it will be at speed. However, it will also require more power and torque in order for it to remain reasonably responsive. This is why despite its tremendous 10 kilowatt peak motor output, the 22 inch in motion V13 still cannot match the performance of the 8 kilowatt 20 inch Bego EX30. But despite the penalty of greater weight, size and cost, electric unicycle continues to grow ever larger in order to achieve greater gyroscopic stability that comes with a larger spinning wheel. And with many of the new wheels now well past the £100 and $4,000 mark, some in the EUC community begin to question the necessity of such access. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret that few regular riders like to talk about, which is that electric unicycle are not stable, period. Seems obvious enough since well, you know, it only got a single wheel. And I'm just as guilty of this myself of throwing around the turn stability in relativistic turn when it comes to my own electric unicycle reviews. Like, oh, how the 22 inch V13 is so much more stable as compared to the 16 inch Vigo T4. But the truth is that when it comes to electric unicycle, stability is an illusion. On a car, the only reason you have to steer is to avoid hitting something. Seriously, 
Short of that, as long as your tire are properly aligned, you can basically just let go of the steering wheel, put it on cruise control, and it will happily continue forward at the same speed until you basically run out of gas a hundred miles later. And you can kind of manage similar things on a motorcycle, but that balance is much more easily upset by crosswind, uneven surfaces, or what have you, as compared to a car. But when it comes to an electric unicycle, without constant and inputs and adjustments, you really only have seconds before disaster strikes. The stability of an EUC is entirely relying on your ability to maintain balance, which is through a combination of weight shift, body position, and nudges and pressure you apply to the wheel in response to the feedback you're getting from the pedals. And the faster you go, the more frequent your inputs need to be, and the smaller your window is for reaction to averse condition and readjustment in order to maintain balance. Smaller diameter wheels further increase that demand since it will react much more quickly to road conditions, which is why experienced riders tell you that larger wheels are generally more stable, but over time as your skill increases and the bond with your wheel deepen, as long as you're able to keep up with the increased demand, a 16 inch electric unicycle isn't any less stable than an 18. It simply requires a faster brain. Which is something that I regularly experience whenever I switch from 18 to a 16 inch wheel. It always feels unstable and sketchy in the beginning, but as I slowly acclimate and my brain begins to catch up, the ability increases and I swear to God, time slows down when I ride. Variable time perception is surprisingly not a new idea. The concept of spacious present, which describe the time duration, where a state of consciousness is experienced when as far back as 1882 by the philosopher E.R. Clay and is very much subjective and varies between individuals. A few years ago, I happened to find myself waiting for a friend at an internet cafe and I saw a bunch of kids, probably no more than 12, 13 years old, intently playing some kind of military first person shooter. With nothing else to do, I decided to settle down and check out what these kids are actually doing. And I remember seeing this little kid who was so young that he was barely reaching over the keyboard to control his character and he was running full clip parallel to this head high wall and he would jump and as the head of his character clear the top of the wall he would zoom in with his sniper rifle spot an enemy player pop a headshot all before he <laughs> land he has less than half a second to do all of this but somehow was scoring kill one after another the timing window was so small that i was barely registering what i was seeing meanwhile this 12 year old kid was processing predicting and reacting with a level of precision that i just could not fathom now aside from deciding that i would never play an online shooter again knowing that i would probably just get destroyed by a a little kid. I also have been thinking about how he was able to react so quickly and my personal theory are that since his digital avatar is unencumbered by the limitation of real world physics and body mechanics, the player is able to, as a matter of fact, they have to speed up their reaction time in order to stay competitive. Now I'm not saying that the brain of this little kid is somehow able to process at a superhuman speed but through practice and pattern recognition he's able to register react and execute a complex sequence of tasks like a reflex and comparing an 18 inch electric unicycle to a 16 inch one is like comparing street fighter to street fighter turbo and with the added speed and torque from higher voltage the difference in demand for faster reaction time is even greater 
And no, not everyone has to speed run a Super Mario level, and you can slow down and take your time. Especially if you're just learning how to ride an electric unicycle, but relatively speaking, at the same speed. Even at 5 miles an hour, a larger diameter wheel will be slower to react, and from the perspective of someone who's acclimated to a smaller wheel, it's going to feel laggy by comparison. This is why a smaller diameter wheel is generally easier to learn now, because it's faster reaction time, it's providing that feedback to you quicker, which is something very helpful for someone who's just starting to learn how to read and control a wheel. However, it doesn't mean that everyone should start with a 16-inch wheel because you will eventually get over the hump of initially learning how to ride and you want, in the end, a wheel that aligns with what it is you're looking for. If you enjoy the slow, chill ride, then an 18 or even a 22-inch electric unicycle would be a more appropriate for you. Do you want the power and impact of a 300-pound defensive lineman or do you want the speed and agility of a running back? And more importantly, they represent two very different kind of thinking. One is all about powering forward, while the other is all about weaving and looking for openings. And over time, as you acclimate more and more to your wheel, I could not help but think that these thoughts were slowly creeping to your mind as well. I have long ago stopped thinking of an electric unicycle as a thing I ride and control, but more a part of me like an extra joint that I hook onto that let me run at superhuman speed. And I think we're just starting to scratch at what it means for us to be able to augment our mobility this way. Ralph Pfeiffer and Raj Bongar in their book How the Body Shaped the Way We Think argue that the kind of thoughts we form very much has to do with the capability and limitation of our bodies and pushing their theory further it would also mean that by changing and extending our physical capabilities it also changes how we think not unreasonable since I think most of us by now recognize how our ubiquitous use of smartphone had fundamentally changed not just the way we communicate but also how we think. I can barely remember basic information like my best friend's phone number and regularly rely on Google search for not just outside facts but also my personal history via Google photos and timelines. And it is in the context of that man machine my mail where a two inch difference become much more significant and also why it never quite felt right for me to simply say that an 18 and 16 inch wheel rides differently. And it isn't a thing you notice right away either. Maybe it takes a few months, a few hundred, or even thousand miles. That itch when you haven't ridden for a few days, and that feeling of missing something. What size electric unicycle did you choose and what did you think of your choice? Share your experience in the comment section below and you know what? Once again I ramble on too long and somehow managed to waste another 15 minutes of your life but I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to my supporter on Patreon, please check out the link in the video description below if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheel is to grow as a community. So tell your friend, teach them how to ride and get them hooked. Until the next video, thank you.